16th meeting of the West Sacramento Planning Commission. We are back from a closed session with our legal counsel regarding significant exposure to litigation. There were no reportable action uh, taken on any of the items. With that, we will go to the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Sabon, would you lead us, please? Tonight's agenda is available on the counter along with requests to speak cards. As a reminder to everyone that requests to speak cards should be completed and turned into the clerk prior to the completion of any staff presentation. For those speakers wishing to speak on items not on the agenda but within the jurisdiction of the commission, please write the item number on your card. All speakers will be limited to three minutes. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised, so all speakers, in order to be recognized, must be called upon by the chair and come forward to the microphone. Speaking in public may cause some individuals to be uncomfortable, so everyone is asked to be professional and respectful at all times. With that, we will go to General Administration Functions, Part 1. Presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the Commission. Are there any public comment. I have no speaker cards. So we will move on to B. Correspondence to staff communications from the Planning Commission Secretary, Mr. Tilly. Yes, um, two items um, to note um, for you. First of all, you should have a memo from um, Kathy Allen regarding um, current item number four. There's a revised exhibit there that more accurately reflects um, the, that particular property. And related to item four, uh, when we get to our regular agenda, uh, we would request that we move that item up and consider that to be the first item on regular and then proceed um, with the other two items um, in the order that they're listed in the agenda. So item number four, we would move up to be right after consent and then take care of that item and then move on to um, the parcel map item and the um, matter out in Southport Business Park. Very well, Mr. Tilly, thank you. Disclosure of ex parte communications. Planning commissioners should disclose any communications they've had on the agenda items at this time. We'll start on my left, Commissioner Sternfeld. Nothing to report. Thank you. Commissioner Berliner. Nothing to report. Commissioner Saban. Nothing to report. On my right, Commissioner Austin. Nothing to report. Commissioner Leonard. Nope. Vice Chair Liebig. I had communications with some residents of the Rivers Association regarding item number four and how it relates to levy maintenance. Thank you. And no ex uh, parte communications for me. <coughs> that go ahead to consent agenda. Considerations and approval of the minutes from April 18th commission meeting. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. Move. Motion from Commissioner Sternfield. <laughs> Second. No motion from Commissioner Sternfield. Second. second. I'm just reciting what, <laughs> what occurred on the dais. And I second by it. Vice uh, Chair Liebig. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. Thank you. The motion carries. <laughs> on the regular agenda, there has been a request by the Commission Secretary to move item number four to the first item on the agenda. Uh, you good with commissioners with that? Mm -hmm. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and item number four. Uh, public hearing regarding proposed zone. I'm oh, sorry. Number four. A public hearing on resolution 19-5PC, recommending approval of resolution 1947, amending the general plan land use diagram from recreation parks to low density residential for APN. 014-760-033, that's for 590 Rivers Crest Drive, and from low density residential to neighborhood mixed use from APN 046-010-048, and that is 2300 Jefferson Boulevard, and Ordinance 19-7 amending the West Sacramento zoning map from recreation and parks to residential one family PD 29 for APN 014-760-033, and from residential one family to neighborhood mixed use for APN 046-010-048 for 2300 Jefferson Boulevard. With that, uh, pass it on to Ms. Allen for present staff 
brief uh, presentation. Good evening, Chair Castillo and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, this item is a request for amendments to General Plan 2035 to change the current General Plan designations for two parcels. Uh, the general plan was constructed at the residential, uh, at the neighborhood level rather than at an individual parcel level. And during this process, there were a couple minor errors made uh, to the two referenced uh, individual parcels, which were uh, reclassified incorrectly due to their locations to adjoining parcels. The parcel at 590 Rivercrest Drive is located in the Rivers Development and was classified as low density residential and had a zoning designation of R1A PD 29. Uh, these uh, same designations uh, extend to all the other residential parcels on Rivercrest Drive. However, when the general plan was updated, this parcel was erroneously changed to recreation parks, which uh, corresponds with the property to the east of it, uh, which is, carries that designation. Uh, in regards to the property at 2300 Jefferson, uh, in 2008, the City Council actually approved a general plan amendment to change that parcel from single-family residential to a mixed-use designation. Uh, when the general plan was updated, this parcel inadvertently uh, reverted uh, back to the single-family residential designation and so staff is recommending this parcel be changed to neighborhood mixed use uh, which corresponds uh, to the mixed use designation it had before uh, this concludes our presentation uh, myself and mr. Tilly are happy to answer any questions you might have thanks before I go ahead and open the public hearing are there any questions directed to staff from commissioners all right Go ahead and open the public hearing. Anyone interested in speaking on item number four? Ms. Flint. I just need a reminder of what the mixed use um, designation means. You have that? Yeah, I have that question answered. Oh, there we go. Mm. Um, because I don't have my key in front of me, uh, I'd like to know if it's going to be a one family parcel or if mixed use means that it's going to be more than one family on that parcel of land. We'll take that question and, and as part of our discussion we'll be able okay. to answer that question. If, if it is going to be multiple family unit on that parcel of land, I want to caution you of our re resolution 06-63 and you're making green belts and you're bringing in pieces of property and building um, much more designated residents on pieces of land that should not be designated that way. So I caution you with the 2035 general plan. It's only been in existence a year and you're already making changes. So be cognizant of those changes that you make. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flint. Any other comments? All right. We will leave the public hearing open and bring it back to commissioners. Are there any questions in the meantime? If not, we'll go ahead and close the public comment. All right, we'll close the public comment. <coughs> commissioners, any uh, questions? I have a question for city staff. Yeah. City staff, could you explain the mixed use designation for us, please? Yes, um, that is, as the name implies, that allows for, does allow for a variety of commercial and residential uses. Um, the property could be developed um, com for commercial purposes or residential purposes or both. Um, there's no development proposal um, at this point in time that we are aware of, um, but this is a designation that would allow for a variety of uses as that name implies. Um, it is a fairly small parcel, approximately half an acre and a tr somewhat triangular in shape. It's unlikely that it would host a uh, fairly uh, sizable uh, development. Uh, but at this time, there's nothing proposed, nor are we aware of anything that is being contemplated by the property owner or other parties. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions by my fellow commissioners? All right. Is there a motion? 
I'll move. Um, I'll move staff's recommendation, but to reflect the revised vicinity map included in staff's May 16, 2019 memo on this item. Okay. Motion by Vice Chair Liebig. Is there a second? All second. A second by Commissioner Berliner. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. This item will proceed to the uh, City Council at their upcoming meeting on June 5th. All right, with that, we will go to item number two, uh, public hearing regarding proposed Zoneville Deval Cone tentative parcel map. Ms. Allen. Uh, thank you, Chair Castillo. Uh, this item is a request for tentative parcel map to divide two existing parcels totaling five acres in size into four parcels ranging in size from 1.132 acres to 1.367 acres. The site contains an existing residence which is located on the portion of the lot which is proposed as parcel one. Uh, the remainder of the site is vacant. The project is located on property zoned rural residential. Uh, I'll remind the commission the minimum uh, lot size is one acre in the RRA zone. Uh, so these parcels are conforming in size. Uh, the property is not on city water and sewer, so they will, uh, the parcels will be served by well and septic, which is uh, regulated by Yolo County Environmental Health. Staff has received communication from the health department saying they have reviewed the map uh, and find it to be in conformance uh, for their needs for siting uh, wells and septic systems on the proposed parcels. Uh, staff is recommending approval of this project as all the findings uh, can be met for it. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Also, the applicant is in the audience, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Bring it back to the commission before I open up the public comment. Are there any questions to staff? On my left, to my right. No questions, staff. We're going to open the public comment. We do have a re request to speak card from Levon and Mike Cohn. I think it's on. Thank you. Um, Regarding item 26, um, we've spoken with staff from the city, and um, it indicates that unless waived by the Planning Commission, Where, any I'm sorry, what are you referring to? So we know. I'm sorry. Exactly uh, page two, number, be 26. The, uh, number 26. Conditions. Conditions. Um, gotcha. Unless otherwise waived by the Planning Commission, any existing overhead utility lines shall be placed underground. Um, we are the owners of Parcel 1, which is the existing home on Davis Road, and so we would like to request that you would waive that because we do not want to have to move the existing overhead lines underground. Um, I doubt that any of the lines on Davis Road are, are going to go anywhere anytime soon, and so we would just as soon leave those right where it is. And we're fine with any new, new construction that would have to do that. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can we bring that up? Well, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go ahead. We'll speak to 22 as okay. well. And it has to do with the half, half street improvements. And uh, we just want to make it known that upon survey of this property, it was identified that the center line of the right of way, um, the pavement to the right of that is already at 14 feet on Davis Road. And the fact that Davis Road was already just, just repaved and new shoulder gravel put in place, we're, we want to understand why that is uh, being in, required. Yeah, being required. So just a question. Thank you. Okay. Great, thanks. We'll address those uh, <clears throat> questions uh, at staff when we uh, get to deliberation and questions. Uh, no other public comment on uh, item number four. I'll go ahead and close uh, the public hearing. Bring it back to the commission. I uh, will start with my right, Commissioner Austin. Any questions? Uh, sure. I mean, I just would like to have staff follow up on items 22 and 26 per the request of the applicant. And um, one thing that I would be interested in hearing is um, tonight we're here to uh, approve um, the tentative map. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe these um, conditions, uh, if staff is comfortable with it, moving it to when the um, 
the individuals be, uh, individual parcels would be under development. Yeah, we'll have our principal civil engineer, Mark Collier, here who can respond to those questions and from and also from the applicant. Good evening. Good evening. So uh, condition 22, which requires the improvement of the, the parcel one frontage on Davis Road is straight out of the municipal code. It requires as a condition of tentative maps that frontage be improved to half width um, across their frontage. Um, the real road standard is two 12 foot lanes, a six foot shoulder, and a roadside ditch. So don't know exactly what's out there. If they have 14 feet on their side already and a, and a shoulder, then it's probably a moot point. So we didn't have that information available when we wrote the condition. Um, that certainly will be reviewed <coughs> at the time that they improve their plans. So just for clarification, this doesn't mean additional. This just means that that has to be there. It means if it's not there that they have to improve it to meet those standards. But if it is okay. there. But if it is there, they don't have to do it, of course. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner um, Austin, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, condition of approval number 26. Right. Yeah. Shall I jump to that or did you have another question on 22? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, again, right out of the municipal code, it does give uh, planning commission uh, the discretion to waive the requirement if they find that, it's, that they want to. <laughs> um, I don't think it's been undergrounded anywhere out there on Davis Road in the past. So, um, you know, it's a requirement unless waived by, by the commission. Thank you. Com Chair Castillo. Yes. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure, Commissioner Sternfell. Thank you. Um, so, so on both items, uh, obviously the frontage is only the small section of all of Davis Road. Yep. So on either item, if there was a, n a need for improvement, is the expectation that the applicant would co be covering the whole length of the road or just their portion of the property? Just their frontage. So, so if there is a need to ex expand the, the road, it would literally be for the frontage of a half of a part like a parcel worth yep okay and we see that in more urban areas you know with sure sidewalk, no, I, I get it fits in other places and, it just yeah. doesn't really fit yeah. here right yeah okay thank you thanks we're going in uh, back on you have a follow-up question regarding yeah. commissioner sablon i have a question on 22 kind of some more question if so if it were moved underground would it just you cut off that one piece over the property yeah they'd go to the nearest pole okay. beyond their frontage and put a riser in and run okay. underground along that section. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but no other property on that street would be subject to that. So that's what Commissioner yeah. Starfell was making point. All right, uh, any other questions on 22 and 26 conditions? Okay, uh, Commissioner, Le Commissioner Leonard, do you have a question on? I, it's, it's, uh, it's not a question, just, just a comment to keep in consideration. Okay. Um, we have the ability to waive it. We also have the ability to waive it currently and postpone it until the rest of the line is undergrounded. For example, if that sh street should be able, should get developed down the road or the, the land around them be subdivided, um, you, could, you could postpone any of this, that requirement to f a future date when that should happen. And that's just, I just want to bring that up as an option to, to consider as we're going through this. Okay. That's not my opinion right now, I'm just saying. No, I think, <laughs> thanks for that, thanks for the information. Commissioner Leonard, any questions? Uh, when you were looking at this map at all, were, is there any consideration on the road and, and how it drains to the neighbors, how that surface area right along the property line drains into the neighbor's property? Uh, there will be okay. with review of the plans, so absolutely. We want to make area. sure that, I, th I think the way they have it, they have it, instead of crested, they have it sloped in one direction to the roadside ditch adjacent to their parcels. But we want to make sure that, you know, the road doesn't block any existing drainage patterns, and we will certainly do that. Okay, so in, in condition 25, the only air place I see drainage is just constructed on Davis Road, and not with the private street along the uh, in the property. Yeah. That... So what that condition was intended to address, um, if you look at Google Earth and the existing drainage improvements that are on Davis Road. There really isn't uh, any significant kind of a ditch on their side of Davis Road. There is on the other side. Yeah. They're building a roadside ditch that's picking up the drainage from their parcels and also from the improved road. Their access road has to have somewhere to go. Sure. So it's possible. I don't know what the solution is. It's possible they might have to run a culvert underneath Davis to the ditch on the north side of the road. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of wanted to treat it generically and come up with a solution that makes sense when we look at it more closely. All right. Thank you. That's my only question. Thank you. 
Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Liebig, any questions? Um, no, thank, uh, thank you, staff, for the report. Uh, generally, this falls within the general plan. Um, the only thought on 26 um, is that I'm typically, I, I'm okay with <laughs> uh, at least pushing it off. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to make sense for this parcel uh, to, to be, um, to underground it for such a narrow width right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm one that I like to hold that though for a future. So should the rest of Davis Road go underground, then this property would uh, need to go to underground as well. So that's just my personal preference on that. Sure, and we will uh, be able to deliberate more on that as soon as we finish the question. The question is here from, for staff, but Commissioner Sternfeld, any other additional questions? Uh, Commissioner Berliner? Commissioner Chablon? No. All right, thank you uh, for, for, the, for the answers to your questions. Uh, all right, well, any discussion on this issue? Uh, Commissioner uh, Austin uh, brought up the idea of holding off on the conditions, but I know that question was answered uh, by the Commission Secretary, and we do have an outstanding um, issue to discuss uh, regarding uh, item number 26. It seems like number 22 mm -hmm. would take care of itself. If those improvements are already there, then that's a mute issue. Uh, number 26, though, seems... Uh, um, there were some comments from the commission on that, so uh, what would the commission I would like, like to, to see if, if um, staff have sort of a menu of options of how the planning commission can handle this if they were interested in entertaining um, uh, waiving this uh, temporarily or otherwise. Yeah, the, um, the challenge with that is the timing of when that could be implemented is unknown and you know, could potentially be you know, many years down the road. Uh, I can say that over the years, um, when we've done these various rural residential maps, the, it has been the typical practice of the commission to waive that that requirement in um, rural areas, although um, it's, it is entirely up to you. Um, the concept that Commissioner Liebig uh, brought up is also something we have considered here. Um, it's more challenging when the timing of that is unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular case, and in talking with uh, Mr. Collier, if we were to go that route, uh, it would it couldn't be something that could be just a condition because once the you know final map is recorded, you know that's pretty much it. So it would have to it would if we were to do that, and since we're not talking about a development agreement or anything here, um, it would the best mechanism for that would be to memorialize it in a subdivision improvement agreement, uh, which is a fairly common uh, document done um, for projects where there would be some type of public improvements. Um, often since in this particular case, uh, since we're talking about a, you know, I think a four lot map, often those improvements are done on a parcel by parcel basis. Um, so um, you would typically record that map first, then record the subdivision improvement agreement with it. And then that would establish what improvements would need to be done as each parcel is developed. Um, if we were talking about a larger project, they'd be doing primarily those improvements much more upfront. Uh, but in this case, improvements are typically done parcel by parcel. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's possible to do what Commissioner Liebig is suggesting. Um, it's just challenging because the timing of when that would be implemented um, could be, you know, un is unknown. And Mark? The catch to including it in a subdivision improvement agreement, and there will be one for the frontage improvements on Davis Road, and typically that has a two-year timeline associated with completion of those improvements. We could certainly extend that timeline for the over undergrounding of the overhead utilities, but when you have a subdivision improvement agreement, if, when you've identified a public improvement that needs to be completed, it needs to be bonded for. Yeah. So, so someone's going right. to have to carry that bond for 10 years, <laughs> right. or whatever the timeline is that you, that you require. There's a catch. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mark. for that. Can I um, finish my, my Austin, comment? So no, no more questions for me, just qu just comments. So um, in general, I'm, I'm really a big fan of undergrounding utilities every chance that we get. Um, a big reason for that is because it helps with disaster resilience. I mean, that's what, something that we're seeing is, you know, power goes out, for example, um, when we have, you know, high winds or floods or fires. Um, that being said, I, I do want to take into account that we're talking about subdividing a five-acre site. This is a very small site. It's owned by a family. It's not um, a multi 
multifamily or a multi-parcel development more than you know breaking a, 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 a five acre rural parcel into smaller pieces um, and so for those reasons I'm, I'm comfortable waiving it in this instance um, that being said I'm not sure that I would be comfortable waiving this requirement for example if the areas across the street were to be developed um, but for this kind of row of homes I'm comfortable um, waiving it but I'm also open to the perspectives from my other planning commissioners thank you Commissioner Austin any uh, comments on uh, the <clears throat> underground utility versus not before we move on mm -hmm. On that issue, uh, Commissioner yeah. Leonard. Just one quick one. Looking at the parcel map of the or the vicinity map of the other similarly sized parcels down the road, it looks like some of them, maybe about half of them, have already been subdivided at some point in the past. And along Davis Road, mm -hmm. every all of those yes. approvals were made without undergrounding. Mm -hmm. So in the future, let's just say the Planning Commission chose um, to keep this on as a condition you'd have one section of this road undergrounded and then those ones that have already been subdivided there's never there's no bite at the apple for them to come back to to be able to underground the rest of it so i'm leaning toward well yeah. we can talk about our decision making but in in weighing that decision it just seems like it wouldn't make sense to do it for just one segment when the rest of the road has no reasonable way of being undergrounded undergrounded in a similar fashion mm -hmm. that's my only comment I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. Vice uh, Chair Liebig. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, my fellow commissioners, and Commissioner Austin put it uh, uh, eloquently, of course. Uh, I would modify condition, I would propose that we modify condition 26 to strike the first sentence. Sentence. Uh, so the stricken part would be, unless otherwise waived by the Planning Commission, any existing overhead utility lines shall be placed underground within and along the periphery of the subdivision. We would keep all proposed new, new utilities shall be placed underground. The, the undergrounding shall be completed with the improvement of the project frontage on Davis Road. Just to clarify on that, wouldn't, wouldn't that keep it consistent? I mean, co that would still be staff's, that would what's be currently in staff recommendation, right? Because if a new development comes in, comes in and houses are built on there, then that would be a new yeah, that well, would it's require, the request. So the, yeah, but there's the, one parcel. We're talking about the whole strip at this point, right? So, uh, the so the I'm I'm proposing that we strike the first part that says existing uh, utilities. So so they can maintain their existing utilities, but new utilities to the mm -hmm. future lots oh. would need to be undergrounded. Mm -hmm. And that's what I. That's also what I heard from the applicant. Right. So and it makes sense then just to leave the middle sentence. All proposed new utilities shall be placed underground. Yes. Yes. We would leave leave everything from all proposed new utilities to the rest of it. So does that make sense? Yep. So right. just strike the first sentence. So, that's are, are there any comments from my fellow commissioners on other commissioners on my left on striking the it first sentence? It looks like we're going to get some comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> So I, I just... Uh, Commissioner Berliner? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, I just want to clarify. The existing overhead utilities are okay being overhead. New ones, underground. That's that's what I'm proposing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I agree. Right. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Sternfeld, I know you, you had some comments on this particular issue. Is that... Any, uh, I, any questions I, or comments? You know, I mean, we're talking about a... a, a th Thin five acre mm -hmm. parcel that's getting lot split. <clears throat> uh, whether the future utilities that are running from Davis Road to those five lots are underground or overground, I really do not have a preference for one way or the other. And we're not creating any resilience by putting the strip from the from the <laughs> the wires above ground to underground to the houses a hundred feet away. Uh, so I don't. I, my preference would be we just strike twenty six altogether. That seems like the most effective thing to do to not cause confusion and probably the easiest thing to do and the right thing to do in the situation. I do also just want to note that um, I think we've all seemed to have come to terms with the discussion around condition 22, mm -hmm. largely based on the belief by the applicant that that's going to be okay. Um, mm -hmm. And not by a confirmation of city staff that there is, will or will not need to be an improvement um, after they're out there and they review the plan. So I just want to make 
that point crystal clear to folks because we're going to be approving it tonight based on um, what I've seen is head shaking from the audience that they feel it's okay based on the comments that staff made about what would be required, not on someone actually going out and checking and ensuring that those requirements are currently met. Um, and if that's the case and everyone's comfortable with that, then my recommendation would be to keep 22 as is, um, to strike 26 completely. And that, um, but I'm open to alterations. Okay. Any other comments regarding we move to Commissioner uh, Berliner and then Commissioner Chablon? So for 22, my understanding, and if, if I'm wrong, please let me know, is that if, they've, if they have it, if they have the frontage rope built and all that, that they don't need to do any improvements. So leaving it in doesn't impact them whatsoever. Thanks. Yeah, this is a standard requirement on almost all all maps for you know frontage improvements to bring them up to current city standards. All right. Any other questions, Commissioner Belair? No, Commissioner Sablon. So I, I just have one question on twenty six. This is related to Commissioner Sternfeld's recommendation. Um, does the commission have the authority to waive? the undergrounding of new utilities? Or does that only attach to the existing utilities? As I recall that section, it would be for existing utilities. Commonly, new utilities are placed underground. So in this scenario, if the commission is interested in um, doing that waiver, we'd suggest you make that part of your, make that part of your motion and then essentially strike 26. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I, agree, I agree with uh, Commissioner Sternfels. I mean, it's, it's almost like a piecemeal approach. Um, if we're going to do it, I think we should require it. If we're not going to do it, then I think it doesn't um, really make a difference. But I, I support uh, striking um, 26 as well. Uh, seems like the commission, there's, there's some interest in trying to keep a portion of it. Uh, but if, if uh, I see some head nodding from Commissioner Austin, so if you want to no. I'm, com I'm comfortable striking 26. Okay. Um, are my other fellow commissioners okay with that before we make that if recommendation could, to staff? Could I interject for a moment? Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, by my reading of this, the, the Planning Commission has the authority to waive um, the undergrounding of existing utility lines. I don't see that the Planning Commission has the authority to waive uh, the required undergrounding of new utility lines. So. Um, I don't believe that it would be proper to strike condition number 26. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, so I th yeah, I think that was my question that I raised. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, I, that brings us back to uh, Commissioner Vice Chair Liebig's um, I might entertain a motion proposed language uh, with Liebig. that. And, and uh, given I think it's pretty crystal clear in terms of what, <laughs> what we can do as a commission. I, uh, what is this? Chair just I, I want to follow up with okay. Councillor. Commissioner Sternfeld. So, so I'm... There may be city ordinance that requires the undergrounding of new utilities. I appreciate that. Yes. But in terms of the project conditions before us, my understanding is we do have within our purview the discretion to oh, it's both. waive project specific conditions as far as what's listed here. It may still be legally required that they do it, but with that, the whether or not it's listed here, I believe we have the right to edit or cut out or add. I, I apologize. I, I'm just, I've, I have a copy of the applicable um, ordinance in front of me. Um, it looks like the Planning Commission does have the right to, I, I correct my previous statement, it looks like the Planning Commission does have the right to waive um, both new and um, existing utility undergrounding. Thanks I'm, for that clarification. Now you've heard yeah. it three different times. <laughs> I'm not going to vote this project down one way or the other. Right. Um, my, my only point on this is we've worked a long time to make sure that we underground utilities as much as possible as we move through. And um, it's, it's hard to bring those older communities um, along because it's expensive to go through and, re or, and underground existing utilities. And I, I totally get that. Um, I just, you know, my personal preference is to, to maintain the undergrounding wherever we can. So. 
All right. Any other comments on the underground? All right. It seems like the majority of the commission, and I, I don't want to speak, if, you, if, if I'm not characterizing this correctly, please speak up now because we're going to make a recommendation to staff, is to keep uh, 22 as is and strike 26, um, condition 26, given the um, uh, ability for the commission to be able to do that. So um, if there are no objections to that, we're going to make a recommendation to staff um, to, to strike that and we'll include that in our motion um, as we move forward. Yeah, your motion should include waiving um, the undergrounding. All right, with that, is there any more discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion. So I'd like to move staff recommendation with one change, and that would be waiving the requirement for uh, existing and new utilities to be undergrounded and by waiving that striking condition 26 of uh, the project conditions. Thank you, Commissioner Sternfeld. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Berliner. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Any interested party may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission in this matter to the City Council by filing a written appeal with the City Clerk within 10 days of tonight's action, and the appeal must be accompanied by the appropriate filing fee. Oh, you have to say why you're All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will move on to item number three, continued public hearing on proposed general plan amendments and rezone from mixed-use neighborhood commercial to business park and related Southport Framework Plan Development Agreement. Plan, agree plan Development 21 Amendments in Southport Industrial Park. Mr. Hardy. Uh, before we begin, I have to recuse myself from this item due to nearby property ownership. Thank you, Commissioner Leonard. Have a great night. All right, uh, we'll wait for Commissioner um, Leonard to leave the room. All right, uh, Mr. Hardy. Hi, uh, Chair and Commission. Uh, this item was continued from April 16th to today as a date certain. At that commission meeting of the 16th, it was recommended that staff work with the applicant to um, figure out a plan to move forward. Uh, subsequently, uh, on the 22nd, uh, both Mr. Tilly and uh, Ms. Hamilton met with the applicant regarding the item. They came up with a master plan development concept um, that would need to be further identified and worked through. Um, as to what that would mean, but it's just a concept. Um, it would take about three to four months to do. Um, so kind of query the uh, commission on that concept, and that would be for the remaining parcels. Um, so it would be adding conditions to parcels that don't necessarily already have conditions that we were trying to place on the current project site. So lots five and six to the east don't share the same conditions as lot four does and they were open to extending those conditions on adjacent parcels. Um, however, the applicant is still seeking full and beating P business park and entitlements that would include trucking. Uh, so staff is asking for a direction on, on uh, the trucking uses. Um, it would also be an intensified of the use of what's currently there, which would require additional CEQA analysis. Um, and therefore, that would also need to come back as part of any master plan concept. Um, so in the end, to sum up, simply staff is looking for feedback and direction in terms of uh, trucking uses um, on the property uh, moving forward. And if depending on that, it would be the master plan concept would also include that if you were simply giving staff direction that you were moving in a direction that trucking was some a use that you would consider for that project site. Yeah, and we, we can't underscore the, the trucking concept because that really would be what we'd be driving where we would go um, sequel wise on this particular request. 
Uh, we had been proposing an exemption previously, given that there was going to be a lot of overlap between the current MUNC zoning and the proposed BP, and that was in the um, presumption from staff from one of our earlier meetings on this that the commission um, indicated they were not comfortable with um, trucking and distribution type uses here. Um, so if the commission um, has some comfort level uh, with those uses, it will be important for us to know that so that if we were to go down this sort of you know quasi master plan route, um, that we could account for that um, environmentally. Um, this is the applicant's um, attempt to devise a, a game plan to ultimately bring this item back to the Planning Commission in a future, uh, future date um, to where um, this is how they would respond to the comments that the Commission has given previously on this item, including at our, our last meeting um, back, you know, last month. So uh, tonight, where this is sort of a sort of a bit of a fork in the road, and so we wanted to get a little, some additional input from the Commission on this particular topic, um, so that if a, a staff and the applicant are going to, you know, do a deeper dive on this with this master plan concept. Um, we'd like to have at least some some assurance from the commission that depending on what that might include, um, that it may get the commission to a comfort level on this particular project. Um, the converse, of course, of that is, is that if the commission, regardless of a master plan and potential conditions and other development restrictions, is not comfortable if that includes trucking, uh, then we would propose not to go down this route um, because if, if in the end, even after this effort, if the commission is not comfortable with trucking and, and similar types of uses, then it may make this sort of master plan concept um, somewhat moot um, since it is the applicant's desire, as, as Mr. Hardy mentioned, to have the full suite of business park uses and remind the commission that the this, we started going down this road one of our earlier meetings when the notion of transitional uses um, was raised by the commission. And so when we were here last time, uh, we attempted to go in that direction with the transitional use concept, which did not include trucking, noting that the applicant and landowner does want to remain having that being an option uh, for them on this particular property should the uh, land use change be made to BP. So uh, we are seeking some additional guidance from the commission tonight about, I think probably, you know, sort of two levels. Um, first, just globally, is the commission comfortable in theory with um, trucking and distribution uses on this particular property, which are not currently allowed there with the mixed use zoning? And then also, um, if the commission believes there could be merit uh, with this ma master plan concept and applying some additional development restrictions and conditions onto not just the particular, I think, seven acre parcel that's proposed for the, GP, uh, the GPA, but the adjacent parcels along in that southeastern corner of, um, of SIP. So um, this is our kind of opportunity to do a check-in on this before we uh, would propose to do a deeper dive on this with the applicant, um, noting full well that that would have to return a few more months down the road would need a more robust environmental document. Of course, would need to be re-noticed um, to surrounding property owners. Um, it would be very much um, an expansion of what we have considered before. Um, but in our view, it's still real, ro real roads lead back to is whether what's the commission's comfort level with having the full suite of BP uses available to the applicant versus the transitional uses that the commission identified uh, to staff and the applicant at on one of our um, earlier meetings on this particular project. So um, I hope we've been able to sort of lay out sort of where we see this as at at this particular time and we've endeavored to um, provide the commission and respond to the commission's direction on this particular project. And so, again, just one last chance for us before we would go into a deeper dive. Um, we would like to hope to hear from the Planning Commission if they feel that that may yield some fruit or if it would be fruitless, then that's something we would like to hear as well. So I think with that, um, Justin and I would be happy to answer any questions and have a bit of a dialogue on this one um, before we go any further with it. 
Thank you, Mr. Tilly. I will bring it back to my fellow commissioners for discussion and questions to staff. Uh, Commissioner Sternfeld. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, so I want to just confirm the applicant isn't here tonight. They are not. I'm not entirely certain why, because we did speak of this last night at City Council when they were here for another matter. Um, but I mean, really, what we need, and in them is by extension, is um, whether or not the commission uh, believes that there could be merit in going to a deeper dive on this than we have done thus far, you know, or not. And if so, then we will proceed to do that with the applicant. And then. Um, <clears throat> I just want to confirm from where we're at in our decision-making process that the initial request before us that was specific to a general plan amendment and a zoning change for a specific parcel is still the actual decision before us, but staff is asking us to consider continuing that decision to a later date under this idea that that project would turn into a more of a master plan involving several parcels that would be brought to us at a future date uncertain. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, my final question is, so I, I also want to be clear on the specific asks around trucking because my, my recollection of the hearings, the, this is now our third going through, this is the first hearing, our main concern, the commission's main concern that was expressed around uh, the proposed change in zoning was having a trucking or distribution uh, or other type of heavy use on this parcel that kind of enters the, the Bridgeway uh, Island community. And so we asked to consider alternative uses or, uh, or kind of le more transitional uses and, and staff went back to do that. The second hearing staff came back, proposed those transi uh, transitional uses. The applicant disagreed and still did not, did not want to go that path and so we kind of gave it more time to kind of work itself out. Now we're here in the third hearing and the applicant is still requesting that we consider a continuous uh, continuance so that they can pursue a master plan that involves trucking and other use, higher uses on these parcels. Is that correct? That is also correct. Okay, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sternfield. Commissioner Berliner. So this is gonna sound like a very silly question, but in a prior commission meeting, one, um, someone from the public asked about, was talking about how loud it was um, at their house at night, unless that was, I had a dream. Okay, cool, awesome. And um, trucking would be quite loud, right? It certainly could be, and we'd have to, for now, assume that could be a 24-7 you know, type operation like many of the other businesses you know, that are out there. And so part of that more robust environmental documentation certainly would be looking at noise. Um, and depending on how that master plan would be configured, um, we don't have much detail on that right now. But this is really a you know a concept to go deeper into, or to say never mind. <laughs> would we be able to limit? I don't think you can do that. Li no, you're shaking your head. No, limit <laughs> limit the I guess hours that. No, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could. Okay, limit the hours that trucks would. Um, um, access it's that is very much permissible to do it just in the real world is very pr impractical to enforce okay um, just because it's we just don't have somebody who can sit out there and make sure that they're doing it and it's just uh, it's the and the remedies for that um, if they were to s say they're not supposed to go past eight o'clock um, and they, they're out there at nine o'clock I mean I'm not sure what we could really do in that particular scenario so hours of restriction or hours of operation are very much fair game but i will have to say just in practical terms they are challenging to enforce okay um i have no further questions thank you thank you thank you commissioner Berliner. commissioner sablon no questions at this time commissioner austin i think commissioner sternfeld's line of questioning pretty much summarizes my sentiments on this issue um things that i am um, interested in in hearing from staff as a for potential negotiation is um, uh, entrance and exit oops, I pull up one. entrance and exit off of Southport Parkway as opposed to promenade that was something I would be open to discussing um, we definitely talked about transition of uses and what we thought would be appropriate adjacent to, to not just residential but um, a well-attended K through 8 elementary school um, so 
we, with that, I'm, I'm not. I'm. I have very little interest in supporting um, a, a proposal that would be brought forward in a future staff report that would include um, trucking, particularly on what appears to be the the kind of southern and south um, western border of this property. Thank you, Commissioner Austin. Vice Chair Liebig. I have some statements, but I, I will save them until after the public uh, hearing portion has been closed, out, opened and closed. I don't think we have a public hearing. Isn't this a hearing? No, we are in a, we do have a public hearing oh, tonight, so we would okay. need to open that and take any oh, public comments, there should there be any. Sorry. Continue public hearing. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Any uh, comments, public comment? We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And we'll bring it back to Commissioner Staff. You want Commissioner Vice Vice Chair Liebig, Would you like to? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, first, I want to uh, apologize. I gave conflicting feedback at the last Commissioner meeting, and I think that's why we're here today. Uh, part, partly, this is my fault. So, um, <laughs> we were open to moderate changes uh, at the first meeting without intensifying the use, and. When it came back, uh, there, there was an agreement with that. The applicant still wanted to intensify the use. However, there was no project. Um, and so um, some of us definitely had good intention to try and make something work. Uh, but I think we, we now have um, a lipstick on a pig situation. Uh, I am not comfortable uh, in, with increasing the intensi intensity here, specifically at this site. Uh, especially when we don't have a project to evaluate. Uh, th there, there's nothing uh, to evaluate. It's just a, a, an intensifying the use um, for future development. So um, no matter how much we grease this, um, I don't think it's appropriate to, to keep it going, um, especially given that it doesn't fall within the exemptions, the CEQA exemptions uh, that we're already working under. So. Um, Again, I, I should have been a little bit more clear. Uh, I think I was definitely trying to uh, find a workable solution, but we're now spinning, so my apologies. Thank you. And, and just to echo what Commissioner Sternfeld and Commissioner Austin and Vice Chair Liebig and um, the rest of the commission have said, I think we've been pretty crystal clear from the beginning that we have tried to work um, in good faith with coming up with something that all parties agree on. And I thought we did that in the first hearing, and we came back and the applicant was still not satisfied we're kicking the can down the road and uh, it seems like though we're, we're not here to please um, the developer in terms of what they want to do we made it clear that trucks in that area is not something that we would desire as a potential business there's a school there's housing uh, it's heavy heavily it's heavily used it's one of the main corridors that comes into uh, Southport uh, and I'm not comfortable with um, changing a condition uh, to then in the future have a business that has trucking no matter what way they enter that property, whether it's promenade or another location. Uh, we've been clear that trucks is not one of those things that we want in that area. Um, and like Commissioner Liebig said, we can't increase this any, any longer. So I am also uh, not in favor of moving this uh, forward. Uh, with that, are there any comments from commissioners or, or if there's no more discussion, we could entertain a motion. So, so I, I only asked questions earlier. Yeah. Uh, I would like to make a couple sure. quick comments and, and largely in the echo of a couple things. Um, uh, so my, my recommendation on this is that we deny, deny the project before us tonight. Mm -hmm. um, if city staff and the applicant want to work on a new project to bring before us, that's certainly within that, the, develop, the applicant's prerogative. Um, it, but to me, what what is even being proposed in tonight's staff report is so drastically different than what we initially heard. I just can't even fathom the two being a part of the same initial item. So I think just from a good governance standpoint, we need to cut, cut the cord on the first and let, let things start over if that's the case. Members of the commission, if I may, I, I understand that staff's preferences to, um, that, the, that the, they don't have, staff does not have findings prepared for the denial of this application tonight um, based mm -hmm. on the matter that came before in the agenda, I was seeking direction. Um, staff proposes that the matter be continued. Um, we can come back in a future meeting with, rec with findings to support a denial um, or to give the applicant an opportunity um, 
to, to change, um, to work on a different plan with staff, uh, or to withdraw their application if they choose to do so. Yeah, I think the commission has Just sort of two options tonight at least. Um, one would be to take no action at all, and then that would then the applicant would be have an opportunity to withdraw or otherwise, you know, try to think up a new game plan and sort of start over again. Or the commission could, you know, just vote to deny this item. And if we have uh, adequate findings prepared, and then the item would be, if they assuming the applicant still wished to pursue it, then they would be going to the city council uh, with an unfavorable recommendation um, from the planning commission. So, so I think several of us are confused because under the alternative section of the analysis, yeah. under the denial, it does yeah. list several reasons that would be reasonable. And I think several of us have articulated both in this hearing tonight, and I know I certainly did in the first and second hearing, several reasons why I found this request inconsistent with the general plan guidelines. So we do have uh, those in there, and if the commission were to uh, want to expand upon any of those to make sure those are part of the record and so that we could carry those forth to the city council, uh, we would be certainly um, amenable to doing that. Is there any other comments from staff? Sorry, I want to finish my comment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, so, so I, even I, I'm still in very strong support of denying this this uh, item before us tonight. I think we've got plenty of good ground to do that, and I'm more than happy to help make the motion, or we can discuss the items that should be involved in the motion as a group before we make it. If there's consensus on that decision, to, the, one other point I want to make though that's important. The business park has been around for a long time. It's taken a long time to fill up, and it has been a collaborative effort with lots of folks involved. And um, some of the best projects that have been brought to that business park are a result of substantial efforts from city staff and the city and other partners to bring um, not just trucking businesses and, and, and distribution businesses to that business park. Uh, and so for me, the, the continued renewal of focus on just one type of industry on these remaining parcels just seems really short-sighted. And as much as I appreciate the developer and the work they've done in this community, I feel like we've been very fair and very open and very uh, willing to hear other ideas. And we keep coming back now for the third time without, without a good plan, without a project, without clear direction, without any consideration of alternatives other than the, the one goal that they had in mind from the start. And, and, and that's, that's really the crux of this for me. It's, it's not even about whether <laughs> as much, it's, it's definitely about the trucking and intensify the use for me, but it's also about the fact that we really have done our due diligence on this and worked through this several times. And there are other opportunities for the site that, and other ones around it for development. Um, so with that, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm for denial and I'm happy to help make the motion and add some things to it based on previous comments we've made in other hearings. Thank you, Commissioner Sternfeld. Commissioner Berliner? Any other, before I go down the line, any other comments from commissioners before we entertain a motion? Commissioner Sablon? No. All right. Commissioner Sternfeld, you want to give it a shot? Oh, uh, entertain you can't a motion? just jump right to it. <clears throat> um, so, well, I'd, I'd like to get a little consensus first. So, I, is, okay. so the, under the alternatives the staff recommend for, for denial, does anyone have concerns with any of those alternatives being included in the, the motion for denial? No, I think they make. I think they make a good good rationale. Does city staff feel like there's enough there? Or would you like additional considerations? Because I'd like to talk through those before the main motion. It's sufficient. Sufficient. Yes. Very well then. Uh, so I'm going to move that uh, we deny deny the, the item before us this evening, uh, based on uh, the specific reasons lined out in the staff report for recommending denial, <laughs> including that the proposed general plan amendment requires additional environmental review not previously reviewed, nor addresses impacts from industrial users specific to trucking operations and distribution, that the proposed general amendment is detrimental to public health, safety, and general welfare by permitting uses that are directly negatively impacting the sensitive receptors to the south by adding additional uses that are unable to be mitigated to less than significant. Uh, I'm going to use the word and instead of or on this, that the proposed general amendment is not consistent with the recently adopted general plan. Uh, recently, as part of the general plan update, the subject property was rezoned to neighborhood commercial to the existing MU zoning. Additional time is needed to develop the property consistently with the existing land use designation and zoning. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Sternfeld, for the motion. Is there a second? Or any, any questions before that? Any is staff pretty? We're good. We're good. Okay. A second? Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Vice Chair okay. Liebig. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
<laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. The motion carries. So I was thinking no, and I was like, no. Nope. So <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Strunfeld. <laughs> All right, so we will move on to Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, I, I think the city staff may need to make an appeal pitch, and also I have a, quite a request. Okay. Um, your action tonight was a recommendation only to the city council, so it will be proceeding to council anyway, so no appeal uh, language is necessary. So Thank this you. item will go to city council regardless. Um, unless the uh, if the unless the applicant elects to withdraw their application, um, their next course of action would be to um, proceed to the city council uh, with this unfavorable recommendation from the um, planning commission. So c can I ask that we receive notice when it's scheduled for city council? I will. I will inform you if it does proceed. It would certainly not be until next month at the earliest. Thank you. Thank you, chair. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and agenda administrative functions, part two, informal discussion. Anything the commissioners would like to share this time? All right, with that, meeting adjourned. Thank you. What's that?